Hello friends, how are you doing? I hope you are fine. I welcome you in the today's discussion which is very expensive for a sugar industry if not properly handled. I mean to say, sugarcane juice clarification, sometimes also called subsidation. It is requested to all of you, please subscribe, share and like to my YouTube channel for my encouragement. Our agenda for this video is Overview of Juice Clarification Juice Clarification Process Impact of Density of Juice to be Clarified on Clarification How Height of a Clarifier is Independent for Clarification Purposes Why Synthetic Polymers are Used in Sugarcane Juice Clarification Process Inversion Losses and Their Impact Sensitive Nature of Sucrose in Terms of Temperature pH and contact time with heat. Now, let me explain the overview of the sugarcane juice clarification. The function of the clarifier is to separate the precipitate and the clear juice from treated or defecated juice, and boiled juice having temperature 102 to 103 degrees Celsius, by employing the principle of subsidation, and decantation. All modern clarifiers are continuously operating type and despite designs have some common features like, withdrawal of juice from top section, and mud from cylindrical bottom portion. The mud settled is drawn by revolving scrapers toward mud outlet. The mud from settler contains 5-7% to precipitate in suspension and juice has to be recovered from the same by filtration, which will be discussed accordingly in coming videos. The slide, on your screen will explain the process of sugarcane juice clarification in a clarifier. The juice to be clarified enters in feed chamber, sometimes known as feed launder, through juice feed box from which it overflow in a slit chamber. In juice feed box, synthetic settling aid chemicals, commonly polyacrylamides, are added for better settling rate. The juice from slit chamber fall down by gravity protected by separating plate on a cylindrical wall of the clarifier. As the juice flow is continuous, the clarifier fill up with the juice and mud due to difference in density start settling in the cylindrical bottom of clarifier. The clear juice come up due to low density and collected in clear juice launder, from which it is collected in juice box. The clear juice obtained is sent to evaporators after passing from preheater for syrup formation. You can see the top section of a continuous clarifier. Feed launder. And, clarified launder. The setting time of mud is very important for juice clarification, and it depends on density of the juice. The density of juice after addition of imbibition water becomes low, which improves the clarification process and hence, it is of utmost value. The time necessary for settling of mud highly depends on difference in density between the juice, and the particles of precipitate contained in it. It must be noted that, increasing imbibition improves the subsidation. At Clewiston, in Florida, tests have been made on the time necessary for settling as a function of the dilution of juice to be clarified. The results of the tests you can see are, only mixed juice having no dilution will takes maximum time, such that 78 minutes because it has more bricks value, and hence, more viscosity, which affect the clarification process adversely. If mixed juice is diluted with more imbibition water, the more will be the clarification. The settling time 38 minutes and 28 minutes are observed, if the dilution percent of water in mixed juice is maintained at 10% and 20% respectively. So, we can say that, clarification depends on dilution of juice also. In addition to the effect of the difference in density, it must not be forgotten that the viscosity of the juice increases with bricks, and also contributes to decrease the speed of settling of the particles. What should be the height of clarifier? The capacities of clarifiers are described in terms of volume, and the time of settling is proportional to the depth of juice. In other words, the capacity of the clarifier is independent to the depth of juice. 
It should be noted that a vessel twice the height will contain twice the quantity of juice, but will take twice as long to settle. So, the only area of clarifier is important. There should be an optimum height corresponding to a convenient time of settling. Role of synthetic polyelectrolytes as a settling aid to improve the clarification process is very appreciable. Synthetic polyelectrolytes are used as flocculation aids to reduce settling time for effective clarification. These chemicals are synthetic polyacrylamides, partially hydrolyzed with very high molecular weights, such that 7 to 10 millions, which on dissolving in water give highly viscous solution and are added as very dilute solutions. The efficacy of polymers depends on the molecular weight and degree of hydrolysis. They are mostly anionic in nature. A dilute solution of the settling aid is fed continuously to the treated juice on its way to the clarifier after the juice has been boiled. It is desirable to feed the solution near the point of entry into the clarifier in two or three streams, to ensure proper and even dosing, the dose varying from 3 to 4 ppm. According to one theory, the large chain molecule of polyacrylamide serves as a bridge between different particles of precipitate with resultant formation of large aggregates, which settle rapidly. The treated juice after addition of flocculants should not be subjected to vigorous stirring, in order that the flocks once formed are not disturbed. Thus, after treatment with polyacrylamide pumping of juice is to be avoided. Inversion losses in clarification process. During the clarification, the pH of the juice changes, falling by about half a unit, for example 7.5 to 6.9. This drop is more marked in the bottom, than the upper portion of clarifier. In spite of all the precautions taken, some inversion losses take place in clarifier. Honig, in 9th Congress of ISSCT, estimates such losses at 0.2 to 0.3 percent of the sucrose, in general, but they can be increased sometime to 1 percent. During the period the juice in the clarifier, at high temperature, about 1 percent decomposition of reducing sugar per hour takes place, 1 percent means 1 percent of all reducing sugars, when the pH is near to 7 and 3% if the pH increased to 8. 3% means 3% of all reducing sugars. Sensitivity of sucrose towards pH, temperature and contact time with heat should be maintained at their optimum values for better clarification of juice. Sucrose is very sensitive to low pH. While reducing sugars such that glucose and fructose are stable at low pH but are destroyed under alkaline pH greater than 7 conditions. Time and temperature play an important role in destruction of sucrose, and reducing sugars in that the decomposition is a function of both time and temperature. Thus, in clarification, if juice is heated to high temperature the duration of contact with heat has to be minimum neutral condition, such that, pH 7 is ideal and in case of any deviations from this if essential, the time element must be taken care of. Thanks you for watching. For more videos, please keep visiting this channel.